Dear viewers, greetings. This present video is about paper chromatography. In this video, we are going to discuss the following topics. Uh, first, introduction of paper chromatography, followed by components of paper chromatography, which includes chromatographic chamber, stationary phase, and mobile phase, principle of paper chromatography, types of paper chromatography, steps in paper chromatography, applications of paper chromatography, advantages of paper chromatography, and finally, limitations of paper chromatography. Paper chromatography. Chromatography technique that uses paper sheets or strips as the absorbent being the stationary phase through which a solution is made to pass is called paper chromatography. Paper chromatography is considered to be the simplest and most widely used of the chromatography techniques because of its applicability to isolation, identification, and quantitative determination of organic and inorganic compounds. Paper chromatography, as the name implies, it is carried out on papers, and the chromatography that uses paper strips or sheets as the absorbent stationary phase through which a solution flows. The technique of paper chromatography was first discovered by Singe and Martin in the year 1943. Components of paper chromatography. Paper chromatography have three components. The first component is chromatographic chamber. The second component is stationary phase. And the third component is mobile phase. The first component of the paper chromatography is chromatographic chamber. The chromatographic chamber are made up of many materials like glass, plastics or stainless steel. And usually glass tank are preferably most. Chromatographic chambers are available in various dimensional sizes depending upon the paper length and development type. The chamber atmosphere should be saturated with the solvent paper. The second component of the paper chromatography is stationary phase. In paper chromatography, the stationary phase is as the name suggests paper. Wattman filter paper of different grades like number 1, number 2, number 3, number 4, number 20, number 40, number 42, etc. were used for paper chromatography. The paper contains 98 to 99 percentage of alpha cellulose and 0.3 to 1 percentage of beta cellulose. Other modified papers used in paper chromatography are acid or base washed filter paper, glass fiber type paper, hydrophilic papers like papers modified with methanol, formamide, glycol, glycerol, etc., hydrophobic papers in which acetylation of OH group leads to hydrophobic nature, and finally, impregnation of silica, alumina, or ion exchange resins can also be made. The third component of the paper chromatography is mobile phase. Pure solvents, buffer solutions or mixes of solvents can be used in the paper chromatography. The commonly employed solvents are the nonpolar solvents, but the choice depends on the nature of the substances to be separated. If pure solvents do not give satisfactory separation, a mixture of solvents of suitable polarity may be applied. Some of the hydrophilic mobile phases used in the paper chromatography are isopropanol, ammonia and water in the ratio of 9 is to 1 is to 2, methanol and water in the ratio of 4 is to 1, and n-butanol, glacial acetic acid and water in the ratio of 4 is to 1 is to 5. And the hydrophobic mobile phase used in the paper chromatography is dimethyl ether, cyclohexane kerosene and 70 percentage isopropanol in combination. Principle of paper chromatography. In paper chromatography, the principle of separation is mainly partition rather than absorption in which the various components gets distributed or partition between the liquid phases. Cellulose layer in filter paper contains moisture, the which act as a stationary phase and the organic solvents or buffers are used as the mobile phase. 
Paper chromatography involves the use of aqueous solution held in the pores of filter paper which act as a stationary phase whereas mobile phase travels over the paper. Due to the difference in their affinity towards the stationary phase and the mobile phase solvents, the compounds in the mixture get separated through capillary action of the pores in the paper. The components may also be separated on the basis of principle of adsorption between the solid and liquid phases where solid phase or solid surface of paper serves as the stationary phase and mobile phase is a liquid solvent. Although the main working principle of the paper chromatography is partitioning, this is employed in many pharmaceutical applications. Types of paper chromatography. There are seven types of paper chromatography. They are paper adsorption chromatography, paper partition chromatography, ascending paper chromatography, descending paper chromatography, ascending descending paper chromatography, horizontal or radial or circular paper chromatography, and finally two-dimensional paper chromatography. The first type is paper absorption chromatography. In this paper absorption chromatography, paper impregnated with silica or alumina act as a absorbent or stationary phase and solvent as mobile phase. The second type is paper partition chromatography. In this paper partition chromatography, moisture or water present in the pores of cellulose fibers present in the filter papers act as a stationary phase and another mobile phase is used as solvent. In general, paper chromatography mostly refers to paper partition chromatography. The third type is ascending paper chromatography. A type of paper chromatography in which the solvent rises upwards is called as ascending paper chromatography. The fourth type is descending paper chromatography. The movement of the flow of the solvent due to the gravitational pull and capillary action is downwards, hence the name descending paper chromatography. The fifth type is ascending descending paper chromatography. Ascending descending paper chromatography is a mixer type of chromatography where the solvent first travels upward on the paper that is folded over a rod and after crossing the rod it moves downwards. The sixth type is horizontal or radial or circular paper chromatography. The sample is deposited at the center of the circular filter paper. Once the spot is dried, the filter paper is tied horizontally on a petri dish which contains the solvent. This allows the separation of sample components in the form of concentric circular zones through the radial movement of the liquid phases. The seventh and final type is two-dimensional paper chromatography. Substances which have the same retardation factor or RF values can be resolved with the help of two-dimensional paper chromatography. Retardation factor or RF factor is calculated by distance traveled by the solute divided by the distance traveled by the solvent front. Steps in paper chromatography. There are seven steps in paper chromatography. They are selection of filter paper, selection of mobile phase, saturation of tank, sample preparation and loading, development of chromatogram, drying of chromatogram and finally detection of compound. Step 1 of the paper chromatography is selection of filter paper. Usually a thin layer of filter paper particularly Wattman number 1 filter paper or cellulose paper is commonly used. Fine quality filter paper used for the paper chromatography should have the following properties. First, defined porosity. Second, high resolution, third, negligible diffusion of the sample, and finally, favoring good rate of movement of solvent. The second step of paper chromatography is selection of mobile phase. Sample is prepared by dissolving it in a suitable solvent or mobile phase and should be inert with the sample. 
different combinations of organic and inorganic solvents may be used depending on the analyte. For example, butanol, acetic acid and water in the ratio of 12 is to 3 is to 5 is a suitable solvent for separating the amino acids. The third step of paper chromatography is saturation of tank. The inner wall of the tank is wrapped with filter paper before the solvent is placed in the tank to achieve better resolution. And the fourth step of the paper chromatography is sample preparation and loading. Using a capillary tube, the sample should be appropriately spotted in the center on the paper and should be at a proper position. If the solid sample is used, it is dissolved in a suitable solvent. Sample volume of 2 to 20 microliter is added on the baseline as a spot using a micro pipette and add right to prevent the diffusion. The fifth step of the paper chromatography is development of chromatogram. The chromatogram is developed by immersing paper in the mobile phase that is the solvent. As soon as the filter gets the mobile phase through capillary action and along with the sample components also moved based on their affinity towards the mobile phase. And the sixth step of the paper chromatography is drying of chromatogram. After the development of the chromatogram, the paper is dried at room temperature followed by using an air dryer. The seventh and final step of the paper chromatography is Detection of compound. The components are identified by use of detecting agents and are characteristic for different chemical compounds. Colorless analytes were detected by staining with reagents such as iodine vapor, ninhydrin, etc. Radio labeled and fluorescent labeled analytes were detected by measuring the radioactivity and fluorescence respectively. Retention factor value or RF value. The behavior of a compound on a TLC is usually described in terms of its relative mobility or retention factor or RF value. The retention factor or RF value is defined as the distance traveled by the solute divided by the distance traveled by the solvent. For example, if a compound travels 2.1 centimeter and the solvent travels 2.8 centimeter the RF value is 2.1 divided by 2.8 is equal to 0.75 the RF for a compound is constant from one experiment to the next only if the chromatographic conditions below are also constant it includes solvent system adsorbent, thickness of the absorbent, amount of material spotted, and temperature. Applications of paper chromatography. Paper chromatography uses are not confined to any particular field. A number of the necessary areas includes isolation, separation and purification, food industries, forensic sciences, and pharmaceutical industries. The first is isolation, separation and purification. Paper chromatography is useful in the purification and isolation of components of mixes. Here, the separated components on the paper are cut, dissolved in suitable solvents and using spectroscopic methods, their absorption is characterized at specific wavelength. Paper chromatography is used to determine the reaction mixes in biochemical laboratories and paper chromatography is an effective tool for the separation of free amino acids present in the human serum. Paper chromatography also involves inorganic applications such as separation of cations like cadmium, zinc, mercury, beryllium and calcium. Paper chromatography is also helpful in identification of accelerator and antioxidant in rubber and is useful for determining its quality. Paper chromatography is widely used in detection of various plant constituents such as opium, quinine and alkaloids. Paper chromatography is also used to do, determine the range of ongoing reactions. Therefore, is a valuable tool in synthetic chemistry.
in food industries paper chromatography is used to, to study the process of ripening and fermentation it is also used to, to analyze the food colorants in synthetic drinks and beverages ice creams sweets etc paper chromatography is used to, to analyze the adulterants and contaminants in drinks and foods in forensic sciences paper chromatography provides a basics of identification and compar comparison against the reference standards for drugs and their metabolites paper chromatography offers a vital role in the viable analysis of samples that are available in milligrams or milliliter quantities finally in pharmaceutical industries paper chromatography provides an information related to the development of new drug molecules reaction completion and progress of manufacturing processes paper chromatography is cost efficient or cost effective and hence used as an alternative method in monitoring the active ingredients present in the drug forms paper chromatography is used to study the purity of pharmaceuticals and finally paper chromatography is also applicable in color identification of pharmaceutical formulations advantages of paper chromatography are it is simple and rapid requires very less quantitative material paper chromatography uses a small amount of the sample mixes only it is cheaper compared to other chromatographic methods the both unknown inorganic as well as organic compounds can be identified by paper chromatographic method the paper chromatography does not occupy much space compared to the other analytical methods or equipments and finally the paper chromatography exhibits excellent resolving power the limitations of paper chromatography are large quantities of sample cannot be applied on paper chromatography in quantitative analysis paper chromatography is not effective complex mixes cannot be separated by paper chromatography and finally less accurate results were produced by the paper chromatography when compared to the hplc or hptlc dear viewers that's all about the paper chromatography thank you for your support thank you